Hey everyone, it's Eric Huey, host of the Gen Y Leaders Podcast, where we prepare millennials to be leaders of the future. Now, if you're familiar with the podcast, you know that it's usually interview-based, and we tell the success stories of high-performing millennials. Each time, I tend to ask a couple of the same questions. Not all the same questions, because that would be a boring podcast, but they're a key one to two questions that I ask every guest on the show. And one of those is, what books or resources have made a positive impact in your life or in your business? Books are such incredible resources because they take years upon years of people's successes and failures and condense them into a few hours of reading. The mission of the book breakdown is to take those few hours of reading and then further condense them into 15 minutes or less of listening. This is the Gen Y Leader Podcast Book Breakdown. Hey guys, it's Eric. Thanks so much for listening. It's my turn to do one of these book breakdowns, so I look forward to the opportunity. Thanks for listening. Uh, the book I'm reviewing today is called Building a Story Brand by Donald Miller. He's actually one of my favorite authors and one of my favorite um, thought leaders in the marketing and communication space right now. And as the title would suggest, Building a Story Brand uh, involves the idea of overlaying the elements of story in your marketing and communication messages. This book review is really going to be helpful to those people in the marketing sector but also I think anyone in business, if you have at least one fellow employee, which I imagine most of you do, then you need this book in your life. I think it is so powerful. The overall message and, and idea of, of using story in marketing communications is, I feel like, so obvious, but yet very few people are doing it. So if I had to summarize the book in, in one phrase, it would be that businesses should always position their customers as the hero of their own story. So I guess kind of three quick points is that it's not about you is the first one. Second point is your customer is always the hero and you are always the guide. So stories occur daily. They're just part of our lives. We're so ingrained with them. If you think about it, any book, movie, television show is all a story. And to keep you watching, they have to engage you. And it's similar to marketing communications tactics to to keep you coming back, to convince you to do things, to sell you on things, they have to convince you and keep you compelled. So if you think about movies as kind of a baseline for an example, um, every really good movie has a very strong guide, and oftentimes the hero, in other words the customer, can't achieve their objective without the guide, and so applying that to business sense would be you would, you would be their guide. If you think about really well-known movies like The Matrix, uh, Keanu Reeves plays Neo, the main character, but he really wouldn't have discovered himself or uh, the true potential he had if he didn't find uh, Morpheus, who's played by Lawrence Fishburne, uh, as his guide. So it took Lawrence Fishburne as the guide to encourage him and guide him uh, to what he deemed as victory. Very similar, going back years past, the movie Star Wars. Luke Skywalker really wouldn't have had the knowledge to do what he needed to do without the help of Yoda. So again, that's kind of the main framework of this book and how you can apply it to your marketing and communications messages. Um, but besides that, uh, Don gives a seven part framework in his book and, and that is this. So step one is uh, a hero. Step two is encounters a problem. Step three is meets a guide. Four is the guide gives the hero plan. Five is that plan calls the hero to action. Six is that call to action helps them avoid failure. And seven, achieve success. So I know I got a little wordy there. So I'm going to give you another example to kind of guide your thought process through this. So most people have watched the movie Hunger Games. So we're going to go parallels with the framework I just gave you, the seven points and the Hunger Games. So uh, in the Hunger Games, the hero is Katniss Everdeen. She's one of the main people and uh, residents of District 12. Um, she encounters a problem, which is step two. Uh, the problem is that she has this evil, tyrannical government uh, that's kind of ruling the world, so to speak. And she volunteer, volunteer, excuse me, volunteers herself as tribute and then therefore must be competing in the Hunger Games and therefore killed or be killed. So as she gets further along in the storyline, she, of course, meets a guide. That's played by Woody Harrelson's character named Haymitch. He's won the Hunger Games before. He's a big deal in the story, so he's really positioned well as that guide to uh, inform and encourage uh, 
uh, Katniss as the hero to avoid uh, avoid failure and achieve success. So again, uh, that hero has to give, uh, or sorry, that guide has to give the hero a plan. So in this case, Hamish gives Katniss um, the kind of a battle plan. Uh, in the movie, she gets I think sponsorship money, better resources, uh, overall you know better odds of improving and her rank and winning the Hunger Games. So step five would be getting that call to action. So in the movie, the game start, game on, right? Uh, and then step six is avoiding failure. So avoiding failure looks like uh, for Katniss her returning home, but then also inspiring the people of Pan Am to rebel against, against this corrupt government uh, and kind of restore order. And lastly, uh, the seventh point is achieve success. So uh, spoiler alert, uh, if you haven't uh, seen the movie, but Katniss does live and she wins uh, the Hunger Games and a hero is born, so to speak. So kind of dumbing down that language a little bit the seven part framework again is a hero step one step two a problem step three a guide step four a plan step five call them to action Uh, step six define failure Uh, step seven define success Um, i guess a real life example of this would be planet fitness i don't work out there but I, i think they have a really strong a marketing message, especially when it comes to incorporating the element of story. I'm sure most of you have seen their commercials or their uh, advertisements online, uh, but they follow this framework really well. So if you think about it, they're positioning the heroes as their customers, the people who work out at Planet Fitness. Uh, the problem of those heroes, of their customers, is that um, they are easily intimidated uh, by other type of globo gyms to where there's quote-unquote meatheads out there. Uh, And they also don't want to pay a fortune for something uh, that they're not going to use a ton or or use all the amenities that are there. So enter Planet Fitness. They insert themselves in the hero story as the guide and their messaging. Again, I'm sure you've seen it and caught on to it, but it's the fact that, hey, you can come work out at Planet Fitness and not feel this intimidation. I think they call it gym intimidation. Um, And then also not pay an astronomical rate. If you're just going to come in and use cardio machines or do some light dumbbell workouts, then we'll only charge you $10 a month. So they're really solving two um, problems for their customer. So I'm getting a little ahead of myself, but that's step four of their, their plan uh, is to solve those those two problems. So their call to action is to essentially get them in the door. And with that, they're simultaneously defining failure and success for the customers because uh, ideally they're uh, solving the two pain points I just mentioned for the customers and as a result um, letting them uh, succeed in their workout goals and also a simultaneous financial goal of, of not spending a ton uh, on a, a gym membership. So I just wanted to use that as an example of how you can apply story uh, or how someone, a company like Planet Fitness is applying story already. There's a ton of examples out there so I'd encourage you to uh, look around at, at some current advertising campaigns and uh, marketing campaigns and, and see how uh, people are either uh, succeeding or failing with using story in their marketing and communications messages. Uh, so I guess things to be thinking about, uh, is the spotlight on you or is it on your customer and your messaging? Uh, in the story, uh, in your marketing messages, the, the hero usually can't solve their problem without the guide. Uh, again, you should be the guide laying out the groundwork and the uh, kind of a plan of attack for your hero. Much like we talked about in Hunger Games, uh, Haymitch gave that battle plan to uh, Katniss and really helped her achieve success. And then lastly, people buy products from companies who believe their customers are the heroes. Um, So things you need to be uh, thinking of to be a guide need to be empathetic yet authoritative. You kind of need to be that missing link in solving their problem. Uh, and then you also need to give them the tools, the path, the education, etc., to really be the hero of their story. Uh, that really does it for me. Uh, again, it's kind of a seven-part framework that's present in this book, Building a Story Brand by Donald Miller. Go check it out. I highly recommend it. He also has a podcast. I'd hate to uh, divert you from the Gen Y Leaders podcast, but if I could uh, recommend one other, it would it would be his Uh, I think it's just called Story Brand on iTunes or Spotify. If uh, you got anything out of this book or want to talk shop about it, learn more, or recommend anyone for the show or a book breakdown, I'd love to hear from you. 
You can reach me at genyleaders at gmail.com. That's G-E-N-W-H-Y-L-E-A-D-E-R-S at gmail.com. Thanks always for listening, and we'll see you on the next book breakdown.